We ended off our last video saying that we had some really exciting things coming over the next couple of weeks. Oh boy. <laughs> I am so excited. Today is the first of those exciting things. Well, we are actually on the way to reception to be picked up. Fancy that. But I'll tell you a bit more about it when we get there. <laughs> on a tour of the ancient city of Ephesus. I just want to say a massive thank you to Osga from the City of Sultans for inviting us on this very special tour. We're Sarah and Marek and we've been traveling on a tight budget since October 2020. Budget travel has its highs and lows but we're so happy to be exploring the world, experiencing delicious foods, different and interesting cultures and seeing some incredibly beautiful places. Subscribe and join our adventures. The iconic Ephesus. Once a very important and bustling port city and now one of the most well-preserved ancient ruins in the world. First settled over 3,000 years ago by the Greeks and for us it's a particularly special and interesting place. Ephesus is mentioned many times throughout the Bible and it's believed that Jesus' mother spent her last few years here. Our first stop for the day is the House of Mother Mary. Excuse the loud buzzing in the background, that is actually beetles and I can hardly hear myself think. It is believed that as Jesus was dying on the cross, he spoke out to St. John and said, here is my mother. And St. John went on to take care of Mother Mary. And he actually brought her here to Mount Nightingale outside of Ephesus because it was too dangerous for her to live in Ephesus. What we found the most interesting about this place is actually how it was discovered. So back in the 1800s, a German nun had a vision about Ephesus and this whole place. Now just remember this, she has actually never been out of Germany before. So it seems set out in the year of 1891 and they actually found this entire place all based on the visions of a lady who had never been out of Germany before. And that's how the whole discovery of the house of the mother of Mary was made. Pretty interesting. So we're busy passing the springs here, it's a natural water spring. Now what's pretty interesting about them is that there's three different sections. Now one spring is if you want health, another spring is if you want wealth, and another one is if you want strength. Sorry. Now what's also pretty interesting is that if you want all three into one little bottle, you come to the spring right here. <laughs> It tastes like success. And just behind me right here is actually the wishing wall. Now the way that this one works is that you take a note and you actually have to stick it onto the wall. If it sticks and your wishes are on that note then it comes true but if it falls off sadly it doesn't come true. So that's our first stop for the day done. We just got some snacks and we're heading out to the place that we're most excited for. This place is so cool. Down amphitheater. Now of course amphitheaters were used for gatherings of people and the way it worked back then is that the less important people or the poor people would sit at the bottom and the more important and richer people would sit at the top. Now later on today we'll be heading to an amphitheater that is 15 times the size of this one. A little bit mind-blowing. <laughs> statue behind me here is apparently of a lady called Nike. Now you might recognize that name. Legend goes that she is known for strength and victory and apparently the company may have got some inspiration from this statue because if you look closely this little swish in the statue is apparently where they got their logo from as well. Hmm, I wonder. So just behind me right here is called Hercules Gate and apparently if you can touch both pillars at the same time you'll get just as strong as Hercules. So we're looking 
looking at some of the oldest toilets to date. So the way that it used to work, you'd have water obviously going down below the toilet itself, but you have another little channel here in front. And this was used for a little brush that was attached to a stick. So you would take the brush, dip it into the water, do a little bit of a cleaning business, and then dip it back into the water for as many times as you need. Now it sounds okay, but the rich people would sit here at the beginning, and if you pan just around that way, that is exactly where the poor people used to sit. So with all this dipping into the water, the more times it was done, the dirtier the water would get. So by the time this clean water, with all the dipped stuff goes into and gets all the way to the end, it is pretty gross. And those poor people down the end had dirty water to clean themselves with. Not great. There's no sugarcoating this one. This behind me right here is the second biggest ancient theater in the world. The only theater bigger than this is the Colosseum in Rome. That is just ridiculous. Now we really wish that we could just throw up the drones so we could get the full scale and feeling of this place. But when we came onto this tour, our tour guide advised us that the use of like professional camera equipment is not allowed. So we'll just respect his wishes. Done. We've learned so much and seen some amazing things today already, so it's been amazing. Now it's time to eat. Let's eat. <laughs> so the place we're coming to lunch is actually like a traditional carpet weaving center, and the ladies here are going to be making us traditional Turkish food, and we are so excited for it. Lunch was so, so good. And there's still leftovers as well. So you know that means that there was a lot of it. And I'm so stoked about that one. We're just going to spend a little bit more time here. Maybe have a little bit of Turkish coffee and then carry on with our tour. It's been a really, really good day so far. We got to see firsthand how traditional Turkish carpets are made and honestly, before this experience, we had no idea how much goes into these works of art. It is not uncommon to take upwards of one year to make just one carpet. The carpet that this lady is working on here is quite a small one, but it'll still take her at least six months to finish. Even after this whole experience, we still don't fully understand the complexity of the weaving or knotting method used to make these carpets. But one thing we found really interesting is how these carpets are actually appreciate in value the more they are used and the older they get. Because with use, the knots tighten and the carpets actually get stronger. Some carpets are made using pure silk and we have the opportunity to see firsthand how the silk is harvested from the silkworm cocoons. After seeing all the interesting behind the scenes, they rolled out the red carpet for us quite literally and we saw a display of the most unique carpets we have ever seen. Amazing! That was so unexpected. We just learned like the whole process on how to make proper Turkish rugs. It's just so interesting and everything that goes into the price as well. It's just amazing and it's worth every single little penny. All the excitement aside, we've actually stopped off at our last stop for the day, which means our tour is almost over. But the last place we've stopped at is 
called the Temple of Artemis. Now this place doesn't really look like much, but it's actually classified as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And what I find amazing is just how you can look at a place like this and see what the weather and time can do to a place and how it can destroy a place. This used to stand about like 20 meters high. And now, as you can see, <laughs> it's pretty flat. And the only thing that lives here are some storks on the top of that pillow over there. So the last actual remaining part of this entire temple, this entire center, is just this last pillar. And it's just crazy to think that there actually used to be around 127 of these pillars all around this place. I can only imagine what it used to look like back in the day. So this has actually been our first ever organized group tour since we started traveling and all we can say is that it was amazing. We didn't have to think about anything, the food, the logistics, the transport, everything was taken care of for us because usually when we do our own videos we have to do a lot of planning, a lot of research into these sort of things and just being able to follow them and just get onto the bus and just absorb all of this information that they were giving us was just amazing and we'll definitely be looking into group tours again in the future I reckon. What was pretty cool is that's actually not the last time that you're going to be seeing City of Sultans. We're partnering up again with them in a few weeks time to do an activity that is most probably at the very top of our bucket list. So jump down into, into those comments down below and let us know if you have any idea what that activity may be. Once again, a big thank you to Oscar from City of Sultans and to our amazing tour guide, Cory. We honestly love this experience. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It helps out our channel a lot. Tomorrow we are heading out to our next work away and what we've heard from locals is that the area we're going to is stunning and one of the best places in Turkey so we are so excited about it. So subscribe and join in on our adventures and of course that bucket list activity that's coming up and we'll see you guys back this coming Tuesday. Now we really, really wish that. Whew. Now we really wish. Really wish.